Okay, everybody, Vincent St. Louis here. Welcome. Hello. I know it's a little bit delayed, but you'll get the picture. Let me take a drink. I am here with Danny Licciardi. Um, I don't know. You know, I invited everybody on here. I just wanted to kind of open it up to everybody as far as, uh, you know, hey, look, if you're in network marketing, you're in another company. I am very proud to be associated with the, with the company I'm associated with, but the reality is I love the industry of network marketing, and if you can grab some, some pointers from uh, what we teach today, and maybe by chance, and, and I believe so, I believe that, that you will uh, you'll get some stuff and you'll say, hey, look, we want to be, I want to be a part of what those guys are doing, and if not, then great, go out there and build your business, be a good steward of the industry. But for all those people that are on here that are, are associated with Uncorked Health and Wellness, then I, I welcome you. <coughs> I would recommend you a couple of things, okay? What I would recommend to everybody is to, um, to one, grab a pen and piece of paper. Number two is pay attention and, and don't be, be multitasking, Facebooking, answering texts, whatever. I, w I would recommend you pay attention and get some notes because let me tell you, there, <coughs> excuse me, there's going to be some great stuff shared with you today. Just to give you an idea of what we're going to be going so that you make sure that you don't leave early <coughs> or think that the good stuff is gone, done or whatever and that you can, can now pay attention and, and, and be aware during the whole uh, conversation here. We're going to talk about the art of inviting. Now, there's a huge area of the art of inviting that I want you to pay attention to. You need to pay attention to the fact of, of the whole aspect of the art of inviting. Danny, if you would please at the bottom of your thing, if you can mute your line and that way every time you make a noise it won't jump to you and and uh, we I won't have to click on the button. But uh, basically we're going to go through through making a list. The, the ability to make a list, and, and now I know a lot of you guys that have been in the industry for a, for a while, you're going to say, oh boy, here we go. No, yes, exactly. We're going to start with the basics of, of making a list of names. How to add to that list of names continuously for the rest of your career. We're going to talk about the online, the offline, social media, Facebook, warm market, cold market, every aspect about how to build a network marketing business and, and basically it starts with, because you know what, something Danny and I were talking about earlier today, and, and one of the things I, I want you to understand, that everybody on this webinar, everybody listening to this, whether you're listening to the recording or you're listening to it live, everybody would probably show the plan 10, 20 times a day. Showing the plan is not a problem for most people. I mean, there's some of you that, that really are kind of scared to show the plan. And actually next week or next time we do this hangout, we will go over how to share the product and how to show the plan. But the reality is most of us would show the plan. We would constantly be showing the plan back to back to back. One rat, you just line them out the door of, of Starbucks and just bring them in, show the plan, show the plan, show the plan. The problem is not showing the plan. The problem we have is who to show the plan to, who to share the product to. And, and so if you can get through this step, showing the plan is going to be a piece of cake. And so we're going to go through this whole process starting in the very beginning of how to develop your list, how to continually develop your list of prospects so you'll never run out of prospects because the reality is, like I said, all of you would be showing the plan 10 times a day if you had the contacts, you had the people to show the plan to. So where do the people come from? How do we go out there? How does Vincent have an endless supply of contacts to show the plan to. How does Danny do that? How do we build our business? How do we sponsor the people we sponsor? Because we had a large list. And we continually add our list. I added two names to my list just today. And, and basically I was busy most of the day, but I still found the, the, the time and the ability to add to my list constantly. So let's start it out right now. I'm, I'm going to first off, I'm going to introduce my, my partner here and my good friend, Danny Lachardi. Danny's been involved in the home-based business industry for quite some time. I'm going to let him really quick just tell a little bit about himself and then we're going to kick off at the very beginning of how to build your list. So Danny, tell us a little bit about yourself. All right. Well, at least I can drink see me now. Water. 
Um, a little bit about myself. Well, for those that don't know me, um, I live down in Southern California, um, 51 years old. I've been doing this network marketing thing, I'd say full time since 2007. Uh, my pa past before that was mark, uh, mortgage and real estate, and I did that, made some really good money on, uh, doing that. And then in 2007, the market uh, fell out from underneath me. It's one of those things that I never thought the well would run dry. I um, had a big overhead. I mean, I had a $4,000 house mortgage mortgage payment. I had three cars. I had a motorhome, a bunch of toys. And I didn't know where to turn to. I figured I'd just keep working harder. But I, I realized the harder I worked, the less money I was making. And I was introduced to a company in uh, June of 2007. It was one of those... Uh, one of those comp one of those things and you know what I got in it decided I would uh, run hard with it I figured why not but let me treat it like a business that it is uh, see I tried network marketing before it had little or no success and I put the emphasis on no but I figured this time you know my back was up against the wall and I had to do something and I went ahead and uh, went hard at it uh, make a long story short I, I had some great success with that company company I earned a lot of money I had a great lifestyle uh, went through a divorce, some things went backwards, but still built my business. And then um, beginning of this year, I got a phone call um, from a good friend of mine that he knew somebody that was looking for a master distributor for a new company. And I figured, you know, I was kind of at first, it was kind of hesitant to do it. And I had a talk with my girlfriend who I, you know, her and I talk about things. And she just said, what do I got to lose? Why not? Um, you know what? I figured. It's just I'm going to treat my business just like if I was a normal distributor. That's what I do with Uncorked. I, I just treat my business as a normal distributor. I mean, I get paid in the comp plan just like everybody else. So I was able to partner up with some great people. Vince in St. Louis, uh, him and I were in business before, but we were what's called cross-line. We worked with each other. We knew each other, but never worked close together like we are now. And I'm very blessed to have him part of our team. And, uh, you know, that him and I can bounce things off each other every day. And these things about these hangouts, I can, I give him 110% credit for all this because I, I have an iPad, I have an iPhone, um, but I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to set all this up. And that's where he comes in. And together, him and I, um, you know, working close together, we're going to take this company to the next level. So here we are today. Talk about what it takes to go to the next level and the, talk about the art of inviting and how do you do it and how do you have have a list and things like that. So I'm really excited about where we're going tonight with this. And uh, <clears throat> that's it. Go ahead, Vince. Back to you. There you go. Awesome, Danny. I appreciate it. You know what? It, it, the, the reality is that, um, you know, it all starts with, with your list. So, so I'm going to talk to you really quick, and then we're going to bounce it back and forth with, between Danny and I. And, and I'm going to start real quick. The person that's just getting started in, in, a, in a network marketing company, you've never had success before, you've never been in the, 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 the industry before, and, and what do you need to do to, to start your business? If you're starting today, you just got involved, and then we're going to work through the process of the person that's been, been in for a while. So the first thing I want you to do is, is, you know what, I can take my cell phone here, and, and I've... I know I have a lot more contacts in here than a lot of people do, but most people have 200, 300 contacts in their phone. And, and what, 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 what I want you to do is I want you to get in the habit, create the, the, the activity of taking the phone numbers and the names out of your phone, out of your head, and put them on paper. There's something about taking a, the, the, the names and writing names down. I remember the first time I got involved with, with the last company I was with, and I did the same thing with the, the company I'm with now on court. My wife and I, we had a running list. I carried my list with me constantly. Every single day, I had my list with me, and I was always adding lists. But what I did was I went through my phone from A to Z, and I wrote down the name of everybody on my phone. I didn't prejudge. I didn't pre-qualify. I didn't choose this person needs it and this person doesn't. I didn't choose whether I thought this one would be interested or this one wasn't because I was serious about building my business. I was serious about uh, the, the fact that I wanted success. And then what I did was I took that list and, and I, I, I had it all written down. And then I went through and I categorized. And, and one of the things that, that you, would, you will find in any network marketing training, 
is what's called a, a memory jogger. Who is your doctor? Who is your lawyer? Who is your brother? Who is your aunt? Who is your sister? Who is your babysitter? Who is the babysitter's parents? And anything like that that's going to help you to jog your memory. But the, the, the true reality is you have to take those names out of the phone book, out of your mind, and put them on paper. Go through your wedding. If you had a wedding, you had a register where people signed in. You know, you, you've got to think, think outside the box. So where do you get your first list of names that you do. So, Danny, give, give them some ideas of some places where you developed your list. Uh, well, you know, the basic one that everybody can start off, Vince, is obviously with your phone. Um, you know, I talk back to when you said about got started before. I can remember back uh, my first home meeting I went to in my last company. We, had a, we played a game called, you know, Who Do You Know Game. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, somebody got a prize for who... Uh, uh, created the most names, and it was just like draw you write out a list. Well, it's kind of ironic that you're talking about your phone. I just went through my phone, but here's the thing: is holding them in your phone is different than actually having them in front of you, where you can write them down and you can put little notes by them. So, how, what, where did I get my names? First off, you know, my my warm market is my phone. I go through my phone, and I divide my list into a three different levels of lists: a, a, an A list, a B list, and a C list. My A list people are my um, business-minded people, people that I know that are entrepreneur have the entrepreneur mindset. Um, you know, maybe people from my last company, people uh, I was in business with in the mortgage business and real estate business, people that own their own companies. They go my A list. My B list is probably um, you know somebody like myself before I got in my last company. Something that you know what I was successful, but I didn't do you know I didn't own my own business. But that would be my B list. And my C list would be, you know, some people that, um, you know, maybe I just think that, you know, maybe they work a nine to five job, you know, maybe they just something that they, they've never done this before. But I do want to make a, a point on that is you don't want to prejudge anybody on your list. Now I set them up in a different way because I want to go after, I want to go after um, the A list first. And Vincent, by the way, I'm getting text messages. People aren't aren't able to get on the video. Tell them to push, click, click play. All right. I'm on it right now. Yeah, no, I, I have it on my it. phone. I'm I've sorry. I've got the volume turned down. All they got to do is click the middle of the video to click play. Hang on. I've got a big words in there that says click play. Hang on. Hang on. Can you see if people are on? Yeah, we've got um, we got twelve. It's bouncing between twelve and fifteen people on. Okay, I keep get, get a bunch of. I mean, I probably have twelve messages of people trying to get on. So we'll see what happens here. But let me um, go back to my list. Why I divide them in A, B, and C? Because here's the thing: is is that your business builders are are, are gonna. Um, or they're going to have the right mindset for this. They're going to look at this as a business. They're not going to look at it as a, uh, another uh, something that they have to um, keep selling videos not available, Vince. Hang on. It uh, is for me. I'm on and everything goes okay from here. I'm on I'm on the video. So some people hang on. I'm sorry everybody. I don't know why it's not working. It is for me. Yeah, I just there you go. I just pushed play. Um, okay. Should I continue? Yep, continue. My mom, as I said, she hopes this record she can't get on. Uh, okay, well, why don't, again, why back, why I put people on the different lists is because my business minded people are exactly what I meant, are business minded. These are people I've had in the past that are business minded, that understand um, what, we're, what we have here. And then I have my people that have 
you know, that may be successful that will look look at this. And I have my people that maybe they'll just be a consumer. But here's the bottom line is you don't want to prejudge anybody. Uh, Pre-qualify them, and we'll get into the pre-qualification part later on. But your list, start off with your list. Uh, everybody that's in your phone. I mean, I mean, I have over 700 uh, contacts in my phone. And I just use that to start off with my, my list. Uh, and then as I go in every day, whatever I do, whether I'm out golfing or whether uh, I meet somebody, you know, wh you know, wherever, they, I add them to my list. And uh, so you, you want to always keep your list in front of you, um, and you can continue adding to it every single day. Uh, I, I think your candidate list, as we call it, is something that's very special. You got to keep it. I have mine on my iPhone, my iPad, and I just take notes on them and I write names on it as I grow, uh, and it grows every day. So uh, that's kind of a tip how I started my list and how I keep it going. Awesome, Danny. The only thing I can think of is why people can't get on is they're not going to uncorksuccessacademy.com because I've tried it on Mozilla and I've tried it on Google Chrome. Unless they're on Internet Explorer, which I don't ever use, and they need to upgrade and get with 2013. <laughs> but um, that's the only thing I can think of is they're not going to Uncork Success Academy. They're trying the old link. Um, it's most of the time it's user error. But anyways, I'm gonna um, keep on going. So you know, I'm I'm the same way, Danny. I so. I've got my A list, I got my B list, and I was writing some notes as you were talking. And one of the things is I did not do is I did not prejudge. The other thing I want people to understand also, when you're going through this process, so many people want to cut out this part. Oh, I will go through, I will talk to them when I'm successful. I hear that a lot. Or I will talk to them, you know, I'm in the, the NFL club, the No Friends Left Club, because I've been in 10 other things and I've already talked to them. 10 different, you know, introduce to them 10 different things. Or I will, will share with them when I, um, when I figure it out. And, and I want you to understand something. The best, fastest way to develop your business and get it off the, the, the fast start is through the people that you know. The people that you, you've been associated with, the people that you have friends with, your friends, your relatives, they may not join you. Now, I want you to understand something, and it's no different with the, your friends and relatives and people you know as it is with the people you meet out there or if you're doing an internet marketing or anything. There's no different. It's not your job to get them in your business. It's your job to offer it to them. And if you run out of list of names, you're dead. Your business is done. So why would you want to go around the largest list you have right now at your fingertips? It, 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 one is it's good practice to talk to them because you, you, you can go out there and especially your friends. Now, uh, some people have friends that will laugh at you, and if that's the case, then they're not true friends. Because you know what my friend said? No, thank you. I'm not interested. And, and they're still my friends. Out, out of all my friends and my family members, I only had one friend that got involved. Well, I have, I have a couple of, of, of friends that got involved, but I only have one of my closest friends that got involved and only one of my family members that got involved and did anything. And, and none of them are involved. Neither one of them are involved with me in this company I'm in with right now. But I offered it to them. It's not my job to, to make the decision for them. It's my job to go through these numbers because I want you to understand something. When you run out of contacts to, to share your opportunity with, you're done. You're out of business. So you need to get good at adding to your list of names constantly and, and be honest with yourself. Be honest with the people that you're contacting. Be honest with your, yourself of whether you're really, truly sharing this opportunity with the people around you. And so be honest with yourself and take out your phone, write down the names of the people that are that are on your, your list, take your, your out your, your wedding thing, take out your your everything you have, any phone book you've ever had, and, and, and you, you keep your list with you. I'll tell you tell you a story. I was so serious with the list of names that I had and constantly adding to it. I'd be driving down the road, I'd think of a name, and I'd, I'd scribble it down on a piece of paper and, and, and make it neat later on, and, you know, when I stopped, because I didn't just take out my planner, write it nice and neat in my planner. 
but I was constantly doing adding names to my list. So one night, late at night, about two o'clock in the morning, I wake up and I'm just laying there in bed, and, and my mind is always working. And, and all of a sudden, for some reason, and, and something came to my mind. I didn't have a name because I, I I I had a, a, a I needed a lawyer one time. It was it was about two years prior to the time that I was involved with that company and and at two o'clock in the morning oh that that attorney so I woke up and, and I didn't just I didn't I didn't just say oh I'll remember that in the morning no because why because my business was serious I was serious about building my business so I got up I went into my to the, the kitchen I opened up my planner the lights were off I opened up my planner and I wrote attorney and I went back to bed Next morning, I woke up and I'm looking at my planner. It's opened up on the kitchen counter. I was like, "What the heck does that say?" And it's like, "Oh, that's right, that attorney." So I go to my filing cabinet. I go through my filing cabinet. I find that 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 file. I take out that guy's business card and I write down his name and and this stuff. If I would have left it to memory, I'd have woke up in the morning. I would never remembered it, and I would have gone on with my life. And this is what happened. This is a true story. So the next that day, I write down the name. I, I remember it because I wrote it down. And and that afternoon, I call the attorney, and I said, "Hello, I don't remember his name right now. Hey, hey Joe, this is Vincent St. Louis. Remember you did a case for me on this land deal that I did a while ago? And, hey, yeah, how's it going? Hey, guy, guy. Hey, listen, the reason I'm calling you, and I was to the point. The reason I'm calling you is is I I got involved with this this business." that I think will be awesome for you and I really think you need to take a look at it and he said okay what are you doing and I said Let, let's get together for for coffee I don't try I don't do lunch I don't I, I don't wanna waste my time with an hour and a half of lunch buying somebody's lunch to to use them as a prospect okay I just I don't do that okay I have coffee with them and I met with the guy in coffee he got in business with us he, he used the product for for almost two years okay never built a business he never shared with anybody but the reality is if I would not have shared my product with him if I would have went back to bed and not got up and wrote down his name and everything that guy would have never been in my business and you never know what can happen through the people so I want to encourage you guys to be honest with your list of names and, and be adding to it constantly now what I want to do do now Danny do you have anything to add to to starting your list of names no, I mean, the big thing, like you said, is don't leave anybody off the list. You know, those you think will, won't, and those you think will, won't, will. You never know. And I, I want to reiterate what I talked about, three different categories. I, I wasn't prejudging anybody to get in the business. I was just, from their past experiences that I have had with them, no, you know, again, you know, because here's the thing you want to think about. When I was... I was on somebody's list back in 2007, and I don't know what if I was an A, B, or C list. I don't think we even knew the difference from an A, B, and C list. But I was a guy that, you know what, that maybe that the person that sponsored me thought, well, you know what, he's close to me. You know what, he, I know he's hurting. Let me see what he'll do with it. And, and that was all it was about. And, and it, we can get in later on talking about the biggest mistake people make on their list is putting people on there when you prejudge them taking somebody who could be a business builder and turn them into a consumer and then trying to take somebody who just wants to use a product and turn them into try to turn them into a business builder but like I said the, the main thing I want to get across to everybody the most important thing besides your why in this business is having a candidate list in front of you every day don't tell me well I don't know anybody don't tell me I, I don't know who to share it with because there's 300 million people in this world or in the United States. Go out there and meet somebody. And, and that's the thing is that I, I've learned is, you know, if, if you don't have a big list, go find somebody who does have a big list. If you don't have, if you don't know people or you don't have, you don't like to talk and you're not a big talker. Find somebody on your list who is a big talker, somebody that, that you know can do this. The bottom line is you got to have that list in front of you right now. If you have a list in front of you right now, and I can't see because of the way I'm set up, Vincent Cad, message Vincent right now and tell them that you have a list. And those that don't have a list, don't have a candidate list, 
Message Vincent right now on this Google Hangout and let him know I don't have a list, but I'm going to start mine tonight. Commit yourself to starting a list. It's okay if you don't have one because this is really the first time we talked about it. But be honest with yourself. If you have a list, let Vincent know. If you don't have a list, let him know you're going to start yours tonight. Go ahead, Vince. That, that's awesome. And one of the things you said there that, that, that's really important, when you talked about your A, B, and a C list, and, and, and I, I want to kind of touch on kind of a, a way of thinking on your A, B, and C list. And, and, and there, there's a couple of aspects about this, which is going to lead into adding to your candidate list, which is one is if you don't have a large list, then maybe you should think about not, not exclusively but maybe looking at your list and, and think of who would have a large candidate list. So who do you know that is the, the, the Susie uh, uh, entertainer or the guy that maybe like real estate or uh, maybe they've had some success in their life before because who do, who, who do people like that hang around with? You know, myself, my wife and I, we're homebodies. We had three friends that we, we saw on a, on a, a, a semi-regular basis. We, I was a carpenter, so we didn't have a large list when we got involved with our last company. So my list had to be of people that um, I, I targeted people. So uh, I'm going to give you a perfect example, okay? My three friends that I, I hung out with mostly. The number one person, first person I shared the business with, owned seven furniture stores. And he also was very, very active in his church. And everybody liked him. Everybody knew him. That was the very first person I shared. When I got involved with network marketing, that was the very first person I shared it with. And you know what happened? He got involved in the business with us. And he built, built a very large business very fast. He was making it, and, and, and basically in less than four months, he was making $2,000 a week. It took me a year and a half to make $2,000 a week, but yet I sponsored him. Okay, the other guy that I sponsored, another guy I sponsored, was in real estate and mortgage. He had like three or four mortgage companies, okay? And he had a large candidate list. He was making over $2,000 a, a week in less than three months. It took me over a year and a half to do that. So what? who did I go after? Who was on, on my A list? It was people like that. The other thing you want to think about, and I don't mean this in a, I, I'm not real politically correct, so I want to be, be really upfront with you and, and, and want you to understand something. Who do we talk to when we, when we share this plan with? Usually we talk to people that it's easy for us to share with. So if I'm a carpenter and I, I work for a living, it would be hard for me to share it with a lawyer. Or it would be hard for me to share it with, with a professional person, somebody who wore a coat and tie. If I'm a dishwasher, it would be, it would be easier for, or as a carpenter, it would be easier for me to, to share it with a dishwasher or the guy picking up garbage on the, draw, on the job site. If I was a carpenter, you know, so we would go at our economic level or below. And I don't mean this in a, in a, a condescending way, so don't get all politically correct with me. Just take the concept as a reality, okay? So if, if I share it with the guy picking up garbage and we all on a standard, a, a normality, we go with the, the easier train, then who is the guy picking up garbage going to talk to? Exactly. He's going to pick up the guy that he feels he's superior to and down the line he goes and before long you got people getting your business that have worked at 7-Eleven for 25 years as a cashier and not that there's anything wrong with that. But so what I did... Because I was so, I knew that I was so limited on my resources. When I, if if it was gonna hurt, if it was gonna be scary to me, it was gonna be real. I might as well, I might as well go to the doctor, the lawyer, the real estate guy, and and, and that's why I found success. Because if I was gonna be scared to talk to the trash guy, the guy cleaning out the porta potties on the side, if I was gonna be weird asking him if he's open other ways of making money, I might as well be, be weirded out asking the person that there was a professional, somebody walking around that, that had a nice car, had nice clothes, had nice houses. And so that's another aspect about your candidate list that you want to continue to add at your level and above. Because if you don't have a large list, then why not talk to people that would?
And, and so you want to go through your list of people that you know from your cell phone, from your wedding uh, 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 register, from the, your high school, whatever it is that you can come up with, and, and you might as well take the people that are A, people that have a large candidate list, people that always have a barbecue at their house and everybody goes to their house. They love to entertain. They've got a lot of friends. Somebody that's professional, somebody that's been an entrepreneur be before, because the reality is somebody that's punched a clock for their whole life, a lot of times they don't understand investing in a business. They don't understand delayed gratification. They don't understand the, the work ethic that it takes a, of self-motivation. So if somebody's worked as, a, as in sales, real estate, mortgage, uh, they've had their own business before, they understand these things. And so, yes, we're going to give the the dishwasher an ability we're going to share it with them because hey I got a friend of mine Randy Gage that makes millions of dollars a month and he was a dishwasher at Denny's and he built a big business but you know what I guarantee you he didn't build his business talking to other dishwashers okay he went up the ladder and and so so that's that's another aspect about your list that you you definitely want to to really think about everybody deserves it but I'm talking about your first list your warm market, the people around you, your friends, family, relatives. Take that list and prioritize. I'm going to tell you a really quick story. I'm going to pass it on to Danny. I know I talk a lot. Sorry, Danny. But one, one of the guys that I shared it with, I mentioned him a minute ago. He was he owned a couple of real estate companies. And, and I sat down with him the first time I met him. Actually, it was the second time I met him. And his name was Cliff. And, and I, I, Cliff told me, he says, I need to make money and I need to make it fast. And I said, okay, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go home and I want you to print me out. I want you to come up with a list of people that you know. And I want you to divide that list up with the people that you know that are the sharpest, the entrepreneurs, the people that know the most people and stuff like that. And then we'll get back together. He says, no need to do that. I already got it. He flips, he, he turns his computer around and there is a list of 400 names, 100 names of the top number people he had. And he said, here's my top people in their order from 1 to 100, the most successful, the most people. And, and you know what he did? This guy, made, he, he went from zero to making over $2,000 a week in network marketing, never been in the industry before. And he did that and actually was just over three and a half months. And the why he did that, because he started at one. And he's, he's just, it was numbers to him. He started contacting all the way down his list. And, and it, it, you know, he built a very large business very, very fast. So, so that, that's, if, if you want to go fast, if you're glutton for punishment, then take your time and, and you, know, but it, you know, if you don't handle pain very well, then get it over with quick. So what, what do you got to add to that before we move on to, to the other adding to your list on daily? Uh, oh, I just want to ask, has anybody me messaged you that they do or don't have a list? You got any messages? Can you see that? I don't know. I don't multitask. No. No, uh, it shouldn't, shouldn't, shouldn't be people be able to type in? Not you personally. Oh, no, <laughs> not from here. No. Okay. All right. Well, here's the thing about this business, folks. You know, you want to have a big business, find a way to create a big list. Because there's, I mean, now, and I think about this, and Vince and I were talking about this today. When we started back in 2007, there wasn't no Facebook, there wasn't no Twitter, there wasn't no LinkedIn, there wasn't no other way of adding people to our list, with the exception of our warm market and the people we meet on our everyday basis. Can't stress it enough about adding people to your list. If you have a list, got 10 or 15 names. I could probably tell you you're going to have a small business of any. I'm just being honest with you. If you have a list of 50 to 100, you'll have a decent business. If you have a list that's over 100, you probably have a good sized business. But here's a cool thing like I said, you can add to your list every day. Every day you meet somebody. Now, we're going to, we're going to get into a little bit of how to invite them, to sit down with them and talk to them. But it doesn't matter if you know if you're the best inviter in the world if you have nobody to talk to. You know, here's the thing is, people put names on a list and they're afraid to contact them. They're afraid to tell them about this opportunity that you have that could change their life. Why? What's the worst thing they can say to you is, no, get away. 
So what? Next? All right? I don't bug people. I, I, I know when they say no today, that means just no today. That doesn't mean no forever. You know? The timing has to be right for them. But who cares if they say no? But what happens if they say, yes, I'm in. I want to know more. And what if that one person is a Frank Marvitz who you have no idea that it's going to tear this business up? Or maybe it's a Danny Lachardi or Vincent St. Louis or Justin Niles. I'm just throwing out names out there. Or, or, or maybe a Brig Hart for those that know who Brig Hart is. You never know who's looking. But if you don't talk to them, if you don't, let me back it up. If you don't put them on your list, you will never know. And here's the bigger thing is maybe that person's praying for something like this. And you decide not to put them on your list. All right, Vince, back to you. I want I want to talk about the 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 difference of see some people listen to what we're I'm I'm going to get into adding your list right now but I just got a text from somebody and I want want you to understand the difference between and I don't mean this in a negative way but a winner somebody that that's going to do whatever it takes to succeed and somebody that's just going to listen to stuff that's going to go in one in one ear and out the other this is what this text says. And I'm not going to, I don't want to put this person on the spot, but it says, I'm working on my list. I have kept it in my phone, but I will out it on, I will write it out on paper now. See, I, I, you guys, I, I want you to understand. See, put it right here, Vince. I'm sorry. The PDA, it has a, it has a spot for it. Go ahead. I'm sorry. It, it, ex exactly. So that's the difference of that. I, I'm, I'm honest with you guys. Danny and I, we ain't going to sugarcoat this thing. You want to succeed, you want to win. You determine whether you're going to, because back years ago, Danny went through the same exact thing that, that you're going through that I went through. I wrote it down. I can show you my old planner. Let me see if I can find the correct one. I've got so many planners out here with the different dates. Uh, it's not in front of me. Um, but I, I can show you my list of names. When I when I went 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 diamond in my last company, I could I could I could track. I knew exactly how many people I prospected with how many people I showed the plan to, with how many people I showed the plan to, with how many people I sponsored. I could track it. Why? Because I, I had a candidate list, and then I took that candidate list and turned it into a prospect list, and that prospect list I turned into a show the plan list, and that show the plan list turned into a follow-up list, and that follow-up list turned into a, a, a sign-up list. You want to make money in this business? Start out with zero. You know what? You know why, why um, uh, 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 Michael Jordan is such a good basketball player? It's not because he was born that way. It's because he sat at the free throw line while other people were sleeping and he shot free throws every day and jump shots every day and three-pointers every day and layups every day and dunks every day. And, and why, why Jerry Rice is one of the best uh, 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 receivers in, in the industry. Why, why you, you Mary Lou Rett, I don't care what your sport is. You know why they're so good? It was, they weren't born that way. They did the basics over and over and over and over again when other people weren't, when other people were sleeping, when other people gave up. I got a text today about somebody's. I don't even want to get in there. I, I, I'll get on the soapbox. I, I, it just you have the ability to, but you, but you can't start at step nine if you haven't gone through step one and two. So, so now I want to talk about how do you continue to add to your candidate list because the reality is all of us only have a couple of friends and, and most of you, I will almost guarantee it, most of you are going to choose not to go your warm market. And I want to promise you, you're missing the boat. You're missing one of the because everybody has one or two people that will, 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 will join you in this business and most of them well, thank you. And some of you have already got a couple of your friends in, and none of them did anything, and so now you're afraid to talk to the rest of your friends. You're afraid to go down that way. And I'm telling you, if you can work on your warm market while you're adding your cold market, your social media market, some of you guys just want to sit on Facebook and do it, and I'm telling you, you, gotta, you why make it so hard? Why make it so hard? So, so now what, what I want to talk about, I want to talk about ways to add to your candidate list, ways to add people to your list all the time. And, and what before I, I get into this, and Danny and I get into this, I, I want to just kind of give you a little, little bit of advice. Set a goal that nobody stays on your list for more than 48 hours. They're either in the funnel 
meaning they're, they're, if, if you're you're got a big funnel here and you're throwing names in there, they're gonna they're gonna fall out as a no, or they're gonna fall in the 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 show the plan, the follow up mode, or into your business mode. So if, if you make a goal, if you meet somebody that they do not sit on your list for more than 48 hours without a contact. Very, very important. So, so a couple of ways that, that I like to add names to my list. One of them I do constantly is, is what I do is, is a, a, a drop card. Um, I do these everywhere I go. It, it's just another way. You know, when I'm at the gas station, I put it on the pump. When I get a, at a restaurant, I leave it in the, the ticket when I pay the bill um, with a receipt that the, the waitress gets. Um, I, I leave them everywhere I go. But this, this is just one way. But one of, one of the ways that I like to is um, I, I like to go to, to, to open houses, uh, realtors and open houses. I, I love it. It gives me a way to kill two birds with one stone. One is I'm meeting people and I'm dream building. I don't go down there to the ghetto to the open house. I go to the nice open houses. So I'm, I'm dream building at the same time. Um, I, I get in the habit of evaluating somebody really quick and, and commenting something positive about them. Hey, those are nice shoes. Um, hey, hey, that's a nice shirt or that's a nice car or wow, those are some big tires on that truck or things like that and, and thing, ways to just spark a conversation. And, and I get in the habit of commenting and looking for something that I can comment on people and, and one of the things I look for is a way to compliment people. Wow, that's a that's a, a very nice looking baby or or um, that's a nice looking shirt or that's a nice looking truck or wow you you really did good at, at, at serving me at, at, at when I'm at the you know if I'm at Fry's or at Best Buy or, or wherever or even the cashier at the, the grocery store. I, I find something to comment to them people. And spe if I go to the same stores over and over again, then I'll comment them. And then one time I'll be in the 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 checkout line when nobody else there. I say, you know what? I, I've mentioned you several times that, that you you have this really good gift of, of talking to people and you have this warmth about you. Have you ever thought that you can use that gift to make money? I've got a way that I would like to share with you if you're interested. Give me name, your name and number. I always, almost 99% of the time, I do the two-step approach. I just got a name and number from that person, and I add them to my candidate list. Okay, so so Danny, share us some other ideas that you have of, of ways to meet people and add to your candidate list. Well, if, before I go there, I just got a text that I want to touch on. Maybe you can help out too. And I, and, um, I got a text a few minutes ago. I've been thinking about it. The, qu the question was, you know, address... People that are new to the area don't have any friends locally where they live. Here's the thing is, first off, I don't believe anybody moves anywhere and doesn't have contacts there already. That's my, my first thought is, is that people move because of jobs, people move because of family in the area, whatever. I, I hardly believe that you can't find people that, to, that you, where you move to the area. But if you, if you move to an area where you know nobody, First off, I can tell you your job is going to be harder than somebody who has a, a 500 contacts on their phone. But here's the thing is, if you move to California and you, all your contacts in Texas, all right, what's the difference there? You still got to get on the phone. You still got to call them. You still got to talk about the opportunity. You can ship the product to them. With technology nowadays, we can do webinars like this with them, with Vince and myself. We can do three-way calls. I've done them all over the United States. Uh, you know, heck, I've done uh, Skype uh, three ways throughout the world. So I can say I can tell you this: for that person that's watching this and maybe moved to a new area, and they don't have that many contacts there, you can make an excuse that I don't have any contacts and just not do it, or you can go out and find people to add to your list that are locally. Like I said, nine out of ten people that move to different areas, they have contacts in that area. But here's the thing is, like I said, with, with the technology nowadays, if you move to California and you have, all your contacts are in Texas, well, then we contact them just like they were in front of you. So I hope that answers questions for somebody that had that, that question. I don't know, Vince, would you like to add anything to it? 
Yeah, absolutely. Okay, let's say you live in you live in Texas. You grew up in Maine, and you just moved to Texas. Okay, what what are the, there's a couple things that I would recommend you do, and 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 depending on you know one is where do you work? You know, let's say you're a stay-at-home mom, and and you don't work, and your husband works, and you just moved to to Texas from Maine, and and you know we're gonna we're gonna paint the worst case scenario. Okay, well that's that's not a bad case scenario because you know what? There's other mothers. At the park, go spend some time with your kids. You know, go go out there and do things with your children. Just get your. Uh, you, you talk about. Uh, you know, you, you see the, the the aliens and they got little radars. Okay, you want to you want to keep your radar focused on all the time. Comment to the other moms. You know, you don't have to. to if it's uncomfortable to you, then practice. Just say hello to one. Most of the time, people. Let me let me just tell you. People love to talk about themselves. So get the get out of your mind that you're you're trying to get them. Get out of your mind that you're trying to to share your business with them. Don't even do that. Use the two step approach. The last thing you want to do is sit down with a, a mom at the park and 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 you you mention a business and what are they going to do? They're going to ask you a million questions. You don't want to show the plan there. You, you want to get to know them, you want a conversation with them. So I do the, either one of two things, and, and I'm going to get to some more ideas on that. I do what's called the, what I call the Columbo approach. Now some of you are, are, are young, you don't know who Columbo was. He was this TV show, and he would, he would carry on a conversation. So, so I'm, I'm meeting, I, I'm, I'm introduced, we're talking about our kids, and, and people love talking about their kids. And, and, and so I'll say, hey, Mary, it's really nice meeting you and, and, and Johnny. And, and you guys have a <coughs> have a great day. I've got to go. And I turn around and leave. And I say, oh, by the way, Mary, you know what? I'm expanding a business in the area. And, and, and you know, I, I love working with, with, with moms and helping their families to, to add extra income. Would you be, are you open to looking at other business opportunities? Yes. No. Maybe. What is it? That's it. I say, look, I've got to run. What, let me, give me your name and number, and I love the ability to get back to you. And then, uh, and, and, and I'll call you tomorrow. What's a good time to, to talk to you tomorrow? And I'm out of there. And if they say, well, do you have a card? I'm going to say, no, I'm sorry, I don't have one with me. Because you know why? Because I don't want them going to the website and having a preconceived idea about what network marketing and what Uncorked is. And, and I'm going to get back to that in a minute when we talk about how to invite. But we're still adding names to your list. And 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 so I, I'm I'm going to do that, and I'm going to get I'm going to gather her name, and and the other is is go to you know go to events. You can go any city unless it's a really small city, and then you be you know you've still got the ability it is go look on go to your your chamber of commerce. You go to your your local event center and find events that are happening. You know, like a, a snake a, aquarium show or a home and garden show or stuff like that. You can find some that are inexpensive. You can si find some that are free. And you go out there and you meet the vendors. Okay, let's say we're going to a home and garden show. I would like to go on a Friday or a Sunday. If I have to go on a Saturday, I'm going to go on a Saturday. But the, you know what? The vendors, the Saturday is going to be busier. But the vendors, the people that are entrepreneurs, the people that are selling at those other booths, they are uh, they're going to be busy on Saturday. Friday, they're not so busy. Sunday, they're not so busy. And so I'm going to collect names of those people. Um, one way you can do it, and this is kind of a cold, really market, is find, you know, there's some places that have billboards, you know, and, and they got a cork board up there, some coffee shops and, and stuff like that, and people put their business cards up there. You, you like cold calling people? Call, you know, people in other network marketing companies and stuff like that. There, you can, you know, just go out there in the environment. If you've got kids, if you have children, you've got the best tool in, in the history. Two things is going to happen. One is you're out there with your, with your, meeting other parents or with your kids. People love to talk about their children, and your child is ramped up, getting into things. And hey, listen, I've got to go. Sorry, I've got to get Johnny needs a nap. It gives you an out. Now you just click the name. By the way, John, it's great talking to you. I'm expanding a business in the area. Are you open to other ways of making money? You seem like a really sharp guy. You compliment them, get them a, get a name and a number, ask them what the best time to get a hold of them at, 
Is this your home phone or your cell phone number? And add them to your list. Write it down. Call them tomorrow. Remember, 48 hours. Uh, so any anything else? to uh, One thing I got a text from, from, from somebody about the drop cards. I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be honest. Drop cards are not – drop cards take all, almost no time. I can, I can drop 20 cards a day without even trying. You know, I go to the gas station. I go to the bank. I go to, the, you know, to McDonald's. I go to Target. I, you know, you're laying them on the, 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 the counter in Target. You know, I can do 5 or 10, 20 drop cards a day without even thinking. And, and it's low cost. But, but – so many people say, "Well, what's your return on those?" I have no idea because most of them get thrown in the garbage. You know, I never go get coffee at Starbucks without leaving one on the counter there where the the condiments are, and 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 so. But you know what? I've sponsored some good people, and and the the thing about the card, how would you like to have somebody call you saying, "Hey, what's your business about?" Would Would you like people interested? Of obviously something on that card interested them. And they were looking. How would you like to have somebody looking, calling you every day? What do you got to lose? You know, it's like putting an advertisement out there. What's it? What's it cost you for a thousand cards? You know, forty bucks. Uh, you know, over a, over a two month, three month period of time, could you go through a thousand cards? You know, I could go through days of teaching how to do that, but I'm not going to for the, for this call. But but so continually adding to your candidate list. Danny, do you got anything to to move to? To add to your candidate list. Yeah, of course I do, and I got a text from Jim Library. I just want to give him some props on it. And, you know, we're he just because we we're just talking about being new in the area. But even if you're not new in the area and you live in the area, um, personally, I joined a men's golf club. Um, you had to play golf, but to meet people. And the thing is, is that we go to different places and we play. I don't get to go all the time because so if I'm busy or not. But some suggestions would be, you know, a networking group. They're all over the place. Uh, a, 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 a church, a different church, uh, or, you know, or at your church. Get into different Bible studies because you, you get to learn about, you know, the Bible, but then also you get to um, uh, meet more people. Just get connected in your area. I mean, don't think you have to go outside the area because, if you can't build a business in your backyard, you ain't going to be able to build it in somebody else's backyard in a different state. Vince and I, we can help you. We'll focus on in your area about the list. And I want to touch on the the uh, drop cards you're talking about. And um, you know, I, they work. I got a. Uh, I was talking to. Uh, I did a um, met with one of our guys, Jim Gibson. He's here in Southern California. He came up with a great idea, and I'm you know, and he uses it. He says that. When he goes like to whatever the mall or wherever to shop or to dinner, he doesn't look for the closest parking spot. He parks the farthest away, and what he does, he'll on the way in, he'll pick three to four or five cars and just drop a card off on their door, not on the windshield because it's kind of ironic. I had one on my windshield and I just saw it today. I don't know how long it's been there, but it kind of fell down where my windshield wiper blades are. Put it right by their window where their door is. And um, he says that he chooses what car he wants to put it on. You know what? He's looking for somebody who looks like they have success. Somebody with, you know, brand new plates on their car. It doesn't have to be a Mercedes or a Porsche or whatever, but a brand new car. That means that these people, they care about what they drive. And not that you have to have a brand new car not to, but they went out and they, they had the means to, in this economy, that wasn't the car business before, and when the economy was good. But in this economy, for people that go out and buy new cars, it means that you know they they got some going on. Maybe this is something that they mindset they can be there. So the cool thing about those drop cards, and I'm gonna start using them. I haven't used them, you know, is that you can. How simple it is? You you go to the shopping mall. You park farthest away. On your way in, you on your way into the mall, you drop off three to five. On various cars, and on the way out, guess what you do? Go out a different door, all right, and put, and go out and find three to five more cars. And what's the worst thing you can do? You get exercise. Hello, okay. So it, it's a great idea. These drop cards. Um, that's something like I said I haven't used, but it, I, I'm sitting here listening to Vince talk about it. And I saw him put it up there. I go, 
How simple is that? And here's the thing is, if you put out 500 cards and you get 1% that calls you back, well, let's say you're, you're, you're lucky, you get 5% that calls you back. And that 5%, 1% wants to sit down with you. That 1%, 0.5% says, I'm in. All you did was go out and bought some cards, dropped them off, and they listened to it. Because here's the thing. I'm not one that, I don't tell people anything else than what it really is what we have. And I'm kind of going off a tangent. But when somebody calls on those drop cards, here's the cool thing is, you know why they're calling. They're not calling you to invite you to the, the policeman's ball. They're calling you because they want to know about your opportunity. So find different groups to join. Uh, if you have kids, get involved in their school. Uh, be branded. I uh, was at my daughter's golf practice. This is kind of cool. And it says health and wellness. And one of the, the kids on my daughter's golf team said, oh, my, my brother does. He goes, you're in health and wellness? My brother's in a company that's health and wellness. I'm not going to mention, well, make a long story short, I just talked to him today. He's in another company. He's looking at a different, coming over with us. But that's all because I was branded. I got to add something to my list. Do you think we, we, we had these shirts made so we could just sell them? No, we know that this is what builds your business. I have a stack in my list, and again, I'm going off a tangent, but it's, I'm at, this is how you put people on your list. I have a stack for my last company. I'm sure Vince does too. I can't tell you how big the stack is. There's my hand. Here goes my other hand, but way up there. Probably this wide of shirts, T-shirts, expensive shirts that are branded with the logo and the name of my other company. Why? Because I wanted people to know what I do. I was. It, it's a conversation piece. Uncork health and wellness. What is that? Oh, it's you know. Then you go into we'll talk about inviting. So, get involved in different groups in your area. Get involved in your kids' school, um, and just you know get to know people in your area. I mean, how many of you do not know your neighbors? You got hmm. you got the hi neighbor or the wave. Hey, what's happening? The first thing I did when I moved to my new place, guess what I did? I met the neighbors next door. Eric and Becky. They got two kids. I met them the first day. All right. Because I wanted her to, she brought me over a plate of cookies the next day. <laughs> but my point is, is that how many of you that you know your neighbor? It's a, it's a wave. Hi, how are you? You see them at the mailbox. You see them driving by. We all do that. I see people every day. I don't even know. I just moved in here. But get get out there in the community, uh, and, and and get to know people. Go to different restaurants. If you go to a a, a, a nail salon, try different nail salons. Because you never know when you're gonna fall in. For some reason, they fall in front of you, they'd be able to add them to your list. So that's good. Back to you. Awesome. Good stuff, Danny. Yeah, so those people want to learn about drop cards, watch the video or the, the audio I did on, on drop cards. So so now we're going to move into to the art of, of inviting the people. How do you how do you, you call the people on your list? What do, what do you say to them? And and then we're going to get into social media and how to work work Facebook. And and you know, I, it, it, we've been on here for for just about an hour now, but you know what? The reality is th this is this is a training. We can't we can't give you all the information you need in 30, 40 minutes or an hour. We're going to go on as long as it takes to to get all this information in. And and you know I, I would recommend you stick around because you don't want to miss something that that's that, that's important that, that's going to help you to build your business and and we don't want to shortchange you either so we're going to give you everything we got um, I've got dinner waiting for me so if I don't get it till ten o'clock you know that's why they make microwaves but anyway so so you know Danny ha has some really good points there I mean I'm branded I've got branded all the time and and everywhere I go and 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 you know one of the things he mentioned about is his neighbors. You know, one of the things I do is I take my 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 yard sign that I have because I I have home business reviews and I put it in the yard. And when I go to do a home business review at somebody else's house, I put that. I get there early and put it out in the yard because people are going to ask about it. He talks about his neighbors. You know, I lived in my my neighborhood for 12 years before I even really went up and had a conversation with my neighbors. And I went and I hit my whole neighborhood. I went to door to door in my neighborhood, made up a little flyer, and said, "Hey, look, I'm having a a business meeting over at my house on Tuesday night at seven o'clock. You know, you should show up." 
hey, what, what if they showed up? Now, I didn't sponsor any of my neighbors, but you know what? I did it. I went out there and did it. So, so now what I want to talk about, and, and Danny and I are going to bounce back and forth about how do you contact your war market, and then we're going to talk about how do you contact the people you're adding to your list all, all the time. And so I want to first talk about how do you contact your war market, the people on your list, your A list, your B list, your C list. And there, there are a couple of things. If you're brand new, then you need to get help. Okay, I would recommend if you're brand new, and, and this is going to go into doing online marketing and stuff like that, if you're brand new, and you, you live near your sponsor, take them to do your first 10 plans with you. Okay, now, part of doing internet marketing, Facebook and stuff like that, you're probably going to sponsor people that are not near you, and so you're not going to be able to help them as much. So that's why Danny said, build around your neighborhood. You know, you've heard the thing of stepping over dollars to pick up dimes. You're, you're over trying to, you live in Northern California trying to, to sponsor people in Southern Florida and, and in Maine and New York when you've got people right around you. You've got millions of people in your own backyard. You're trying to, to build a business over there when you've got people right here that you can build a community with. You can help. So, so it, try your best to stay in your neighborhood. Your your area, your town, your city, your 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 your, you know, your Northern California, Southern California, Southern Texas, wherever, because you can build a community that way. And don't prospect those. I'm not saying don't prospect those people, but try to build it in your neighborhood, in your neck of the woods, because you can help them more. So so what I would recommend. This is this is what I would say. It, it, let's say. Um, just at a, just making um, a scripts or whatever. If I'm calling my brother, hey Tony, this is Vincent. Man, we haven't talked in a while. We need to get together, or I need to share something with you. I you may not be interested. That's okay, but I've at least got to offer it to you. When can we sit down? And if he's not local, I'm going to get into that in a minute because it's very important that you do this correctly. But so if it's um, let's say it's a coworker, I'm not going to tell him anything at, 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 while I'm at work. I don't want to go through 20 questions. I want to share show a plan properly, and we're going to get into more detail about how to show the plan at the next hangout. So you definitely don't want to miss that one. But I'm going to say, hey Joe, you know what? We've been working together for quite some time. I've got something I need to share with you. Let's get together after work, or or um, now, if it's somebody that's very successful, I might say, hey, look, I value your opinion. I would like to share something with you and get your opinion on it. Um, maybe it's on my list. Hey, Joe, listen, I know that you're in real estate. You've been in real estate for a very long time. I'm expanding a business, and I'm looking for a few sharp people that are connected. Are you open to other ways of making money? And if they say what is it, I, I'm gonna honestly, I, I, I don't, I don't give an explanation over the phone. So I may, the, I'm gonna do do two scenarios. So, hey Joe, this is Vincent. I li, listen. I, I, I'm fixing to walk into a meeting, and I just thought of your name and figured I was gonna give you a call. I'm an expanding the business in the area, and and I work with a lot of realtors. I would, I would like to the opportunity to share something with you. Are you open other ways of making money? And they're going to say yes, no, or what is it? And they're saying, what is it? Hey, look, I really don't have time. I'm going in this meeting. Can we get together tomorrow? What time's good for you? Okay. If he wants to, well, just tell me what it is. And say, look, Joe, I, I'm not going to do that. If you're interested in sitting down and looking, then you are. And if not, then no big deal. I don't want to waste your time or my time. And he's down the road. You can't get into a presentation over the phone. You just can't. I'm not going to do my business injustice if they're not interested. Your your job is not to convince these people to get in business. Your job is not to convince them to sit down with you. Don't get confused activity with accomplishment. They're either looking and interested or they're not, period. And if they're not, then find somebody that is because there's plenty of them out there. So I, I see so many people wasting so much valuable time showing the plan with people that don't want to be shown. Spending so much time 
following up with somebody that doesn't want to be followed up or chasing down somebody. Vincent, if, uh, man, can you give me some pointers on how I could get Joe to sit down and see this business? Because, man, if, he, if I could just get them to see it, I know they could hit it out of the park. Potential minus commitment equals nothing. Quit wasting your time trying to get people in and look for people that want it. And so, so when I talk on the phone, I my purpose of the phone call is for one thing and one thing only, to set the appointment. Period. Only thing the re the only reason for the phone is to set the appointment. If I met Mark at the 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 the, the park the other day and we we were there playing with our kids and I'm going to call her the next day. Hey, Martha, this is Vincent. Remember we met the other day. It was really great meeting you. How's Johnny? I know he had that bruise on his elbow. Hey, listen, Martha. The reason why I'm calling you is, is I mentioned that I'm expanding my business. I love the chance to get together. When can we get together? And, and, and sit down for a couple minutes. And, and then I will also say, look, this is the, I, I, I know we're, we're really busy and we've got the kids, but, but is there a time when, when little Johnny and Martha are not going to be there, especially if they were not well-behaved children? Because I want her to have undivided attention. This is, this is, this is mommy time. And, and so I'm going to be honest with her. Is, 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 are the kids going to be with you? Because if they are, it's going to be really hard for you to understand and, and pay attention. Is there a better time when maybe we can get together where, where the husband is taking care of the kids? And, and so I'm going to schedule the appointment then. So, Danny, what do you got to, to add to, to contacting these, your, your candidate list? Well, I, 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 first off, I, I think you have to mirror everybody that's on your list. And um, you're going to speak different to everybody that's on your list. You're going to have your close acquaintances that you know close. And, you know, you might just say, hey, Vince, like when I contacted Vince, it was, you know, hey, how's it going? Can I get caught up if you haven't spoke to him in a while? Um, you know, hey, I got involved in this opportunity. I'd like you to take a look at it. What is it? I'm just, there's people that I'm going to just be upfront with what I'm doing and I'll let them know because they know who I am. You know, uh, they know, you know, the success I've had. So, that's going to be difficult for everybody on that list, on your list, success in the industry. Now, you got close friends that you might be able to call up and say, hey, Vince, I got involved in, a, in an opportunity that um, it's got a great product, we're changing lives, and there's money to be made on the side. Really? Yeah, give me your credit card, let me get you signed up, because I want to make sure you're positioned perfectly in it. There's people you can just say that to. But here's probably the biggest one that I use. That majority that you could use after you had that relationship built with somebody. I might, you know, meet Vince. Hey, Vince, you know, how's it? This is all over the phone. Vince, you know, how's it going? How's the wife and kids? You know, I saw your, you know, your son just got married. Congratulations. I see it. You're a grandpa a couple times. Your old man, whatever. You know, just build a conversation. And I might say, hey, Vince, let me ask you a kind of a personal question. Has the economy affected you in any way financially? And I wait to hear his answer. 9.9 .9 out of 10 people are going to say yes to that question. And then I might follow up with this. Vincent, you know what? What are you doing? You know, if the economy is affected, I might find out what's going on. You know, I, you know, again, you have to be able to be personal with these people. These are these are people that you're close to. But let me ask you this, Vince. What are you doing? Um, to get that lifestyle back that you used to have. His answer might be, well, you know, Carrie got a second job. Um, you know, I'm, you know, trying to just work harder where I'm at, whatever. You know what, then I'd go like this, Vince, you know what, I mean, you know my story back in 2007, I was the same way. My, you know, the economy affected me, and the economy wasn't even that bad then, but what I found is, I found there's another opportunity out there to earn an extra income to supplement my income to help me get back on my feet. Now this might be a shot in the dark, Vince, but I think this could be something you and Carrie could, you know, you can wrap your arms around and you can do pretty well at this. And I listen to what his answer is. If he says, "Well, I don't know, Danny. You know, you know, I don't know if if I if I have that in me. You know what, Vince? Let me ask you this. What day? Let's sit down and let's just talk. Let me show you exactly what it is because." 
I haven't really ever sat down with you or I haven't showed you what this business is all about. And I just find out what time he has to sit down. And, and But the bottom line is you build a relationship back up. I had a guy in my last company that for 10 years didn't speak to this guy and bugged him for like three or four different times, finally met him in a, 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 parking, in a parking lot at Walmart and shared the opportunity with him. The guy got into business and passed him up. The guy who sponsored him passed the guy who he sponsored passed up his sponsor within three months in the company. Didn't speak to him for ten years, or maybe it was at eight. It was ten. Ten years. Met him in a parking lot at Walmart. Shared the opportunity and product with him. Guy got him in the business, and all he just says, "Hey, Kelly, I got an opportunity you need to take a look at," and that was it. There's, you know what? Is there a wrong way to, to contact somebody? Not really. It, it all depends. Everybody's different. You know, like Vince talked about, you know, maybe, um, for instance, a person that I uh, met at eight, the AT&T store. Some of you know my story there. I just met him a couple weeks ago. We're actually going to meet tomorrow. Um, talked about it. I left and I called him back up a few days later and I told him, I said, you know, I really think with your personality, you could do really good at this. And we're going to meet tomorrow and talk about the opportunity. I mean, the thing is, you can never say the wrong thing to the right person in this business. But you have to learn how to say something. Now, some people out there are afraid to talk about network marketing. Why? Why? It's the business of the 21st century. Don't be afraid to tell somebody what you're doing. Now here's the thing is, well Danny, I don't have a story like yours. Great, use my story. Use Vince's story. You just got involved in the business. You don't have a story. The thing that Vince touched, touched on that's very important is you don't want to talk too much about it. If you're in the area where your sponsor lives or your upline is, have them talk with you. Have them meet with you. Have them do a three-way call, okay? But the bottom line, folks, is you got to do something with these people. You got to talk to them, all right? Um, Vince, you want to add any more to that? Yeah, absolutely, I do. There, there's two two key points I want to talk about. One is is this book. If you've not uh, read this book, your first year in network marketing, I've I've gone through this book many times. It's a it's a, it's a really a good book to. For, for anybody that, especially if you've never been in the industry before, it's going to kind of set stage of some of the, the things to watch out for, prepare you for some of the pitfalls and stuff like that, and go through a, 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 a kind of a, a, you know, just a overall good basic generic book on, on network marketing by a guy named Mark Yurnell. Um, it, it it does. It, it's an old school book, so it's going to go back to the you know a lot of the the you know 80s and 90s stuff, but it's still very very valuable today. Um, what I want to also talk about is, is when you're inviting the the art of inviting, and something I want to share with you guys. You need to with everybody you talk to. Okay, there's there's a couple of of, of thought processes I want you to to really think about here. One of them is if you said the word network marketing to me, there's going to be a door going to go shut, and and you're going to be spend the whole time with a pry bar underneath that door trying to get back in because I'm going to because most people have a conceived a preconceived idea of what network marketing is, and and so you but then you go back to the the fact like the old Amway days where you invite people over for a barbecue and really it's a presentation and you're not you're not really having a barbecue you're doing a some sort of an uncorked presentation you don't want to do that you want what you want to do is you want to find a happy medium between telling them too much and not telling them enough you don't want to lie to people and you, you don't want to get too evasive with it but you know what I don't tell people it's network marketing and if they ask is this network marketing you don't want to assume that that's a negative if somebody says to me is this one of them pyramid things I say why are you looking to get in one and, and if they say no say great you're gonna love this if they say yes say great you're gonna love this if they ask me is this network marketing 
And I, I, I'm not going to say, oh, no, no, but this is different. No, I'm going to say, is this network marketing? Why? You looking to get involved with network marketing? They might be looking. A lot of people love the industry. And if they say, no, I wouldn't get in one of those, say, great, you're going to love this. And I sit down with them, and then, and then I go through the plan with them, and they say, well, this is network marketing. Ain't it great? That's why there's so much money to be made in it. But I, you told me it wasn't. I said, no, I didn't. I just said, you're going to love this because the reality is their conceived, preconceived notion of network marketing is usually uh, based on experiences, whether it's, it's Joe Blow, the guy in the, the, the you know, plaid suit that was trying to get them, or Martha with a garage full of Tupperware, or the guy at work that was blah, 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 would never shut up, was always trying to get people, was annoying, or, or maybe the, the perception of, of something they were in before, and they had a bad taste in the mouth, but it was years ago. If I was in network marketing 20 years ago for five and a half years, and if somebody would have said to me, you want to get a network marketing or, or you got to take a look at this network marketing company, I would have never sat down with them. But they didn't do that with me. Even though when I sat down with the person, even though I knew it was network marketing, I still was open to sitting down with them for hopes that it was different. But if they would have said it was network marketing, I'd say no, just out of instinct, and I would have never sat down with them. So you want it when you share it with people, you don't want to just say, hey, Uncle Joe, I've just got involved with a network marketing company. I need, think you need to look at this. You want to find a, a, a medium between inviting them to a barbecue and not having a barbecue and saying blah, 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 everything about your company and everything. That's why I don't give out business cards. If I meet people, I don't give them a business card. Why? Because I don't want them to go to the website. Why? Because the website has no heart. It has no passion. I want to sit down in front of them, belly to belly in front of the table. The, the, the website, the video, the, the, the scrolling through, people say, oh, I'm not interested in that. They have no idea what that is. That is what's there, but that's not what we're doing. You got to understand, you guys. You, you, I don't give business cards to anybody, ever, unless I'm. I'm I, I've already met with them. I've showed them plan. I give them a business card. But when I meet people, I don't give them a business card. I want to sit down in front of them. I want them to look at me in the eyes, which is going to lead me to contacting people your 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 candidate list that don't live in your neighborhood or in your town. And, and when I say in your town, if you can drive there and back in one day, that's local. I'm talking in, I live in Sacramento, Redding, Reno, Fresno, Bay Area, all points in between. Two to three hours away is local. LA, that's probably not local. I'm probably going to get the person on a Skype. Skype is amazing. It's free. Or I'm going to get them on the phone, but I prefer looking them in the eyes. You can even do a Google Hangout right here with one, something like this. It's free with somebody. So, so Danny, I want you to kind of talk about kind of some ways because you built a big business overseas using Skype only. So, so we can you now we're only not overseas, but you can do the same exact method because I did the same thing as Danny did. I use Skype a lot. So we're talk, we, So we want to sit down belly to belly with people local. But what about Uncle Joe that lives in Maine and I live in Texas? Okay, what do I want to do? So I want to do the exact same thing that I would at a Starbucks, but we're going to use the internet because the world has changed and now we have these great tools that are free. So Danny, talk about ways of showing the plan or presenting to somebody over the internet. Well, you know, again, it's a different, you know, for everyone. But it's the same, if that makes sense. Bottom line is you got to get somebody who's interested. You know, people say, ask me, Danny, how do you get people to meetings? Well, the ones that are interested are the ones that show up, as simple as that. The ones that don't show up, they probably weren't interested. But Danny, how do you get people on these calls? Uh, it's no different than right now. You know, we sent this out. I sent the email out to everybody in the company. I don't know how many people are on this. I sent a text out to everybody. I sent a normal text out. The ones that are on are the ones that are serious about it. Now, how do you contact or how do you do this presentation to Uncle Joe that's back east. Well, first thing I would do is just be honest with Uncle Joe, let him know what you're doing. 
let them know who you got involved with some guys that have had big success in this, know them how close they are. You can tell them that, hey, it's a brand new company, they're just getting started. Uh, but the bottom line, what you can do is, you know, we do the opportunity calls. You can get people on the calls to listen to my self events, share the opportunity. If that doesn't work for them, you can do a three-way call with myself or Vince and them or your your upline, whoever your sponsor is. Bottom line is you got to do something. You can't be afraid of the phone. I mean, look, I can pick up my iPhone. It's it's not heavy. Um, here's my house phone. It's, look, I can pick it up with two fingers. It's not heavy. you got to make that call. Whether it's Uncle Joe in Maine, you're in California, and you have to make the call. What do you say? You know, again, it's different. When I got introduced to my last company, the person that sponsored me he says, hey, he, he went the product way. He said, you know, Danny, I got this product that you need to try out. It, you know, it, it, this is what it's done for me. Just use his testimony. That's all you got to do. Why did you get in the business? That's what you want to share with somebody. Why did you get in? Did you get in for the money? Did you get in for the product? It's as simple as that. My reason that I share with somebody could be different than yours. The people I talk to are probably different than yours, but guess what? I still talk to people every day. My, my friends on Facebook that I, that I prospect, I probably prospect with them different than you do because of my success I had in the company. But understand this. For those that are sitting and go, wow, Danny has success. I can never do this. Back in 2007, I had zero success, zero success in this industry. But I had drive, I had a why, and I went out and did it. I didn't let any no stop me. I figured out on my own what to say to people. We had a little script we used. We shared the product, and you know, then we used to show the plan. It's no different here. It's no different here. I guess what I'm saying is to Uncle Joey that's on the East Coast or wherever, Uncle Joey in Florida, whatever, or, or East Coast, I guess, is New York, Uncle Joey or Uncle whatever, Vinny. Whoever he is, <laughs> be honest with them. Tell them what you got in for. I got this amazing product that you know gives me more energy and tastes good and it helps me get through the day. And guess what, Uncle Joey? There's a business attached to it, and people are making a bunch of money doing it. Really? How much money you made? Well, hang on. Let me get Vince or Danny, who's who's had big success in this comp in this industry. They'll show you, tell you how to make money at it. That's always going to come off how much money you made. You didn't tell them you got in because you're making money. You got you told them you got in because the product you like the product. Let us talk about the money side to them. It's as simple as that. I guess what I'm saying when you talk to Uncle Joey or Uncle Louie or Uncle Vinny or cousin Ed, I don't know where I got these names from. Just <laughs> tell them why you got in. Simple as that. You got in because you love the product and you want to make a million dollars. Whatever. But the biggest thing is get them on the phone. When they start asking questions, don't be the uncorked encyclopedia. Let Vince and I or your upline do that. That's what we're here for. When they say, well, how does it work? I don't know. I just got in. Well, you need to have an answer to that. That's not the answer. The answer is... If Vince asks me, and I'm brand new, he says, Danny, well, how's it work? How, how's, how's the opportunity work? You know what? That's a great question, Vince. You know that I'm new, but hang on. I got this guy that's been in this industry for 20 years. He knows all about it, and he's had great success. He's there you know, in a drop of a dime. That he'll answer all your questions. Let me get him on the phone right now. Are you free for the next 10 minutes? That's how you do it. Stop trying to do everything yourself. Try this isn't, I don't have a college degree. I don't think Vince does either. Okay, he's a contractor. I was a mortgage person. Before that, I was in the car business. Before that, I worked for LA Fitness. Before that, I built homes. So I don't have a college degree. This isn't difficult. The most difficult thing is, is getting you to do a little bit more today than you did yesterday. Making one more phone call than you did yesterday. I got a text from somebody about motivating people. Well, what we're doing right now is helping you motivate yourself. Because here, I'm not a motivator per se, for, for instance, or whatever. 
But what I am here is I'm here to teach you how to build a business. So I'm going to teach you everything that I know that that's worked for me, that I've been taught, so you can have a business that you can motivate yourself because I can't motivate you. That's not my, my job. My job here at Uncorked and this job is to teach you everything that we know so you can learn the business. That's why we're doing this. That's why it's, it's 8.30 and we've been on this for an hour and a half because we want to help you with your business. That's how we motivate people. If you're not sponsoring people and you've been in for two or three weeks or two or three months, look at yourself in the mirror after you get off of this, this webinar and ask yourself, self, what am I doing wrong? Okay? Maybe you're not talking to the right people, you don't have the right list, you don't, you don't have the right people. Maybe you don't even have a list. Right? You don't have a list. Maybe you're not participating in the calls that we do. Now we're doing these, we'll probably do these two, three times a week. I don't know. It's fun. It's easy. I'll let Vince set it all up and I'll just click play. <laughs> Simple for me. But folks, talking about inviting, you know, there isn't in a big secret. Not a big secret. If you don't have anything to say, or you don't know what to say, just tell the person why you got in. I love the product. I love the interlink. I love the detox. I got, where's my other product? I got boxes of it down here. You know, I love my uncork. Whatever. That's a way to start. Start with your people on your list. But you can't have a list. You can't call people on your list if you don't have a list. And don't tell them you run out of names. That's that's you're you're making excuses for yourself. There's an old saying: you can make money, you can make excuses, but you can't make money and excuses at the same time. You decide. Fence back to you. That's good advice, there, Danny. Absolutely. So there, there's a couple of, of, of things I want I want to touch on there that, that you had mentioned. Is, is you know, the reality is I I can't motivate anybody to do do stuff they don't want to do. I'd rather go out there and find people that want to do it. You know that's that's just the bottom line. So I'm I'm going to come back to to what you're saying about uh, you know about showing the plan with with somebody that's local or not local. And and the reality is the reason why we want to get in front of them is because passion thro shows through. People join you, they don't join on court. I'm going to say that again. People join you, people don't join on court. People want to know. People want to be a part of something great. People want to be a part of some a movement. They want to. They want to change the world. They want to change your life. And and if you just say, you know, what, I'm, I'm looking at this little thing. You know, I, I think you might be interested in this little thing I'm doing. It's just on, on the side here. I'm not really doing it very much. You know what? Ah, nobody wants to join that. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll be like, no, I'm not interested. You know why? Because they don't want to do that. They, they want to know, they want to get involved with somebody that's passionate. Hey, look, you know what, John? I don't really know how this thing works. All I know is I'm fired up. This thing's brand new. And you know what? Let me get you on the phone with Frank or let me get you on the phone with Danny or Vincent or somebody else. And if you're already new, you've already been doing it. You know, when I sit down across from somebody, I'm showing the plan. I'm fired up. I talk about what it, it gets me excited. You know what? People want to be a part of something new and exciting. This is new and exciting. And, and so when I, if, if it's long distance with them, then I'm going to get them on a Skype because they can see my eyes. And, and now, like Danny said, you're either going to, you're either one or two people. Either one is you, you, you're going to use your upline or somebody else to, to as for credibility. Somebody asked me, well, how much money are you making? Say, look, I'm just getting started. I don't care if I've been in for two years. I'm just getting started. Because I'm not going to throw out a number there because that number to me might be high. To that person, it might be low. No matter what you say, it could be a negative. So I'm not going there. I just tell them I'm just getting started. Why? What, 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 would, you, what would impress you as, as far as, as money? If I could show you somebody making that kind of money, would that be a difference to you? Great. Let me get Danny on the phone. Let me get Vince on. How would you like to meet the owner? That's what I'm going to do, but when I sit down and if I'm going to call somebody, let's say I met them on Facebook or, or somebody who doesn't live local, if, if, if I'm going to use my upline, if, you know, if I can, and if I've done, if I show the plan a bunch of times and you don't need to, but, so I'm going to go into the fact of if I'm going to show you the plan over Skype. This is what I'm going to do, okay? I'm going to get on, you can go to a thing called Join dot me it's a screen sharing 
uh, uh, thing. You can get a free account there, and you can use it periodically. And it's join.me, and it's basically it's a screen sharing thing where I can I can we can talk over the phone, on the phone, and you can see my screen. And I'm going to go, and I'm going to get the flip chart presentation that's right there on your website, and I'm going to do a presentation right there with them. And, and, and I'm going to say, look, and, and, and I'm going to talk about exactly what Danny said. What am I passionate about? I'm passionate about the product. I'm passionate about the, the, the money. And, and I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step out on the limb here just a minute. I know Danny's going to agree with me. 90% of the time, I lead with the business. Hey, are you open other ways to make money? Has the economy affect you in a, in a, a negative way recently? Um, things like that are business motivated because something I want you to understand. If I come to you with a product, now I'm not saying I don't hand out samples. I do, but if I come to you with a product and you're not, in, you don't like the product for whatever reason. Oh, but that's okay. How would you like to get involved in the business? Doesn't work that way. But if I come to you in the business and you're not interested in the business, I say, well, maybe you would like some of our products. Go to my website and, and, and would you be one of my, my customers? See, it's easier to flip it around from the business to the product. And, and if you do go the product and they're like, well, I, I like the product, but I'm not interested in the business, then you can turn it into business. But 90% but, but of the time, I'm leading with the business. The product is just a, a product of the, the, the it's, it's just a way we make money. Most people are looking for a way to make money more than they are a way to get energy or get health. I'm just saying. Okay, so so if I'm doing a one-on-one -on -one over Skype or or on the internet, I'm going to call them and say, hey, Joe, this is what I want you to do. Let me know when you're in front of the computer, what, what day is a good day when we're in front of the computer. Okay, look, I'm, I'm going to do one of two things, and we're going to show the plan next time. This is about the art of inviting, so I'm not going to go in detail about it. I'm going to either get them on the phone, and, and I, I've got my preference. I'm either going to have them go to the website and push play right there while I'm on the phone. I, I, honestly, I don't like that one as much, although it's, it serves a good purpose. I'm going to get on there, and I'm going to show them either I'm holding it up, or I'm going to get on Skype and I say, man, this thing's awesome, blah, 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 blah. This is what I like about it. This is what I'm doing about it. Well, tell me more about it. You don't need to show them anything. Tell them. Talk to them. They can see you. You don't have to show pictures and stuff like that and do a presentation. Just tell them about it. Well, there's eight ways to make money. They've got these new products, and we got some more products coming down the pike, and there's less than a 1,000 people in the whole company, and you know that there's other companies that got millions of people. Well, you can earn from everybody that joins the whole company and blah, 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 blah. But you know what they're going to hear? They're going to hear your passion. That's what people get involved with. They want to get involved with something special. Your passion is something special. A, a flip chart or a video has no emotion. So, so do your one-on-ones. Now, you can list. We're going to get into social media now. So we, we talked about how to make the phone call, how to invite people, sit down with people belly to belly. We're going to talk more in detail about that next webinar on, on how to show the plan. But now I want to talk about how to contact people on Facebook and social media, well, primarily Facebook. It's the number one place, okay? The problem with Facebook is 99% of the people that you're prospecting on Facebook do not live near you. So you cannot help them as easy. You cannot build a community as easy. You cannot sit down and show the plan with them as easy. You can't go on follow-ups with them as easy. There's all these problems with it. So if I'm going to prospect people on Facebook, I'm going to target people that have at least been in the industry, some sort. And Danny's going to do it different than I'm going to do it. We all have our different ways because Danny has a story that he uses. Maybe you don't. So what I'm going to suggest is just a couple of things. One is friending people. Build your friendship base up. If you're good at chatting, I hate, I suck at it. I type with one finger, and, and, or two if I'm lucky, and most of that's spelt wrong. By the time I get a sentence down, the person I'm chatting with has already typed me three sentences. I'm horrible at it. I don't use Facebook that much. Because I'm, I'm just not that good at it. But if you are, you can chat with people. 
find out about them family occupation recreation message okay get them on a phone call get them on a Skype don't answer a bunch of questions in text talk to them call them but friend people go out there and, and start adding to your friendship base I've got over 3,000 something friends I don't know them all and I don't post every day on Facebook about on court I post about my my family uh, and, and business about 30 percent my family about 70 percent but when I chat with people I want to ask them about them so how long you've been in that business what if what are you doing but I want to caution you they have an in, in, in intention to get you out of uncorked into their business don't even go there if you're not strong in what you're doing and I do not ever 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 I'll show you yours you show you mine or I'll, I'll show you you show me yours I'll show you mine I, I don't go there look Joe I appreciate that I'm not interested in seeing yours I'm happy with what I'm doing if you're interested in, in seeing my business I would love the opportunity to share it with you if not that's fine I'm going to the next person I'm not gonna sit down and look at somebody else's business to show them mine what's the point don't get confused activity with accomplishment you're not looking to convince people to join you you're looking for people that are looking to join that are looking look for people that are dissatisfied most people in that network marketing are dissatisfied you just gotta share them with why this is good for you if you're a mom join mom groups on Facebook and, and chat on Facebook chat with the other moms get to know them people do business with people they know like and trust if you're a quilter you get join quilting groups and, and create relationships with the quilting people okay and and, and and create a conversation hey Martha it's great to chat with you you know uh, you, you mentioned about your husband and getting laid off from work look if I could show you a way to to make extra money would you be interested the other thing I want to point out is what's the first thing you do when somebody wants to friend you you go to their wall I don't need to tell everybody what I do if people aren't going to your wall, the first thing I always do, I had a friend of mine that text uh, Facebook, uh, we've been friends for a long time. I, we've been out of touch or whatever, and they sent me a private message. Hey, Vincent, how's it going? Long time no chat. What's the first thing I did? What's he up to? I clicked on his thing, and I went to his wall, and I wanted to find out what he's up to. So you don't need to shove it down people's throat. You don't need to really prospect, but, but remember, it's relationships creating relationships so I know Danny you use Facebook a lot so, so give us some input on on how you use Facebook and, and so kind of some some pointers on that well hang on a second let's take a <laughs> snack before I uh, before I get into what I do is how I use Facebook let me, let me share with everybody that's on this chat right now and this hangout that's new in the industry how you can use Facebook to your advantage it's pretty simple I'm trying to find uh, a text right I mean a message hang on let me find it here before we go there um, um, gosh I feel bad somebody had posted the other day and I'm trying to find it somebody had a picture Hang on, don't just just hang on. You caught me off guard because you gotta kind of give me a warning when I'm gonna speak, so I know. Um, somebody just posted the other day. Let, let me just say this: if you're new in the business, it's as simple as posting something, maybe a picture with you and in, in your uncorked at the gym or something, saying, you know what, I, I'm I'm very thankful for this uncorked to get me to the gym, or you know, I had a long day yesterday. I wouldn't have made it without my own court. I see these posts all the time for new people, and guess what I see? Their friends answering, well, what's on court? Tell me more. What is it? Is it a wine? Or, you know what? That's how you will, show, you will grab interest to your friends because they all want to know what you're doing. See, I, I mean, I post that every now and then, but that's not how I attract people. I attract people through the business side of it because I can. Now, and I want to go back on what Spence talked about leading with the product and leading with the business because on Facebook it's the same thing. I lead with the business because that's I can. 
But even when I lead with the business, when I do a one-on-one, -on -one, and we'll get into this later on, not tonight, I share the product with them. But I'm there for the business, but this is, you got to understand something. People say, well, you know, I'm, I'm a great salesperson or I'm not a salesperson. We're not selling anything but dreams, and this is the vehicle for our dreams. That's just the product. So understand, when I talk business to someone, I share the opportunity, I still lead with the product. When I sit down with them, I'll, I'll mix it for them right then and there. And then I get into showing the plan. Now, that might be difficult for you. But again, go back to why you got in uncorked. Why are you in uncorked? I talked to Lindsay Lou the other day, and she told me they're in for the money. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Because guess what? There's a lot of money to be made. When people tell you, it's, oh, it's not, I'm not in it for the money, I'm in it for whatever, they're lying to you. <laughs> and if they are not in it for the money, tell them to send forward your check every week to you. Here's the bottom line. Am I in it for the money? Yes, I am. Simple as that. But I understand the money side of it only comes when I help you earn money. That's how I earn money. Okay? Going back to Facebook, how do I how do I use Facebook to build my business? Well, you've heard me talking. If you're on a Super Saturday, how to use it? There's a lot of different ways. If I post something, or anybody posts something, comment on it, like it, share it. And you know, we have our Facebook page. Invite all your friends to it that are in the business. And if they're not in the business, invite them anyway. Let them see what you're doing. Tool Facebook to me, I feel is a very good tool. Yes, the bad side, downside of it is they might be far away from you. Um, but more and more people are using Facebook. My mom's on Facebook. There's thousands, millions, gazillions of people on Facebook. How you use it is the right way. Yes, I don't promote the business every day. Um, I promote it, obviously. I put things on our Uncork uh, uh, team page. But I, I post things about myself. I put motivational things on there. I, I want people to know about Danny. If I'm out playing golf, or I'm out, um, you know, uh, with my daughter um, on the, her golf match, I might post something. I tag myself here. I tag myself there. I have Facebook on all the time on my phone. I'm always searching at it. How do you use Facebook to build your business? It's totally up to you, but just use it. Okay, if you haven't, if you're in the business and you're on this chat right now, and you haven't posted something about uncorked, okay, you're you're missing the boat. You know, talk about this this uh, hangout tonight. Talk about the product, what it's doing for you. You got to check. Wow, I so cool! I got paid. You know, if you don't have a story, use my story. Use Vince's story, but just use Facebook. There isn't a really a wrong way, a wrong way to to use it. If if you're new in the business, chances are people that you are friends with probably are not in network marketing and never have been. So you don't have to worry about them coming after you. Again, with Vince and I, I get friends, I get friend requests all the time, and I look at them, I see who they are and what they do. I don't even know these people. I look who the mutual friends are. I get hit up all the time for other companies. And, and I'm not into the, I don't show you mine, show you whatever type thing Vince was talking about. I'm not into that. <laughs> you know, people know what I'm doing. But you know, um, you know, there's a saying, in, you know, as a Christian, they'll know you by your fruits. Well, people on Facebook will know what you're doing by your posts on your Facebook. Get away with posts and negative stuff about what's going on in your life. I, I can say that's, that's probably the, the wrong way of doing it. Post exciting things, things you know with your family that, that people want to hear. They don't need to know when you're having a bad day. That's not what Facebook's for. It really bothers me when I see people post, and that's probably the bad side of Facebook. All right? Use Facebook to meet new friends. Get reacquainted with the friends you already have or friends you haven't seen in a while. You don't, you, you know, I mean, go on there and search your high school. There's a way to search for people. Search for network marketing groups. I mean, you got to be careful about that, but there's a way to do it, you know. But just the bottom line is, I'm I'm not going to tell you the wrong, really the wrong or right way of using it, but just use it. 
You know, if you're an uncorked right now, let people know. I've seen people like, you know, um, Jeremy Liu posted something about uncorked one day. He probably had 20 comments on about about what uncorked is. I guarantee if I post right now, gosh, and thank God for my uncorked who got me through the day, I bet you I won't get 20 comments. And if I do, they'll be from people already in the business, in our business. I will approach it a different way. When you chat with people, again, understand this. It's just, it's no different than having people in front of you, next door to you, or sitting in a coffee shop. It's about building a relationship. I talk to people all the time on Facebook. I mean, you probably can't see on my iPhone, but I just got, you know, I got hundreds of chats that I do every day, okay? Because I'm always looking. I'm always looking for somebody who wants to earn an extra income. Let's see if I can find one here. Um, you know, I get people all over the United, not in the United States, all over different countries asking me what am I doing that these days. I can't wait to go international. But we're building it right here, right now. But just do something. It's as simple as that. There isn't a wrong way to use Facebook you know, to build your business. You decide what you want to post on. I'm not going to tell you you had a bad day, don't post it. I should, probably shouldn't say that. You decide what's going to work for you and what your friends want to see. But make sure people know, and this is probably the big, make sure people know that you're involved in an, an, uh, an opportunity that they might have a chance to earn some extra income. Because they might be on their hands and knees right now praying for something. You might have the key to unlock their, their, their stranglehold on their finances by just posting something about uncorked, and they might read it. Maybe they're in a bad mood, and they go on Facebook, and they see something about what you're doing, all right? And that might click something to them and, and open up their mind to not this opportunity. Go ahead, Vince. Back to you. Awesome. Well, we're going to wrap it up here in just a minute, but I, I want to touch on a couple of things. Because um, there are a couple things that you can do that are, are not uh, positive. One is don't post your link on other people's wall. Um, do not comment on somebody's post with your link. Okay? You, you just don't do that. It, it's like putting a sign, going down there and putting a sign in somebody else's front yard advertising your business. You just don't do that. Okay? Keep everything positive. Um, if you've got 200 friends, then every time they see, you know, uh, uh, every time you post something, they see it. So, so we'll inter interject some other stuff in there also. If you got only 200 friends, and some, one of the things you can do is you can start friending other people. Friend a couple of people a day and, and, and build your friendship base. But comment positively to other people's posts. Yeah. Hey, great, uh, that, that's a, a nice looking flower or beautiful child. Or Don't just like them, but comment. So you can comment on other people because the way Facebook works, I've got over 3,000 friends. I probably see 30 or 40 of them or 100 of them's post. And so I've got to go back in there and look at some people and comment on their stuff to bring it up on my news feed without getting too, too, too detailed about how Facebook works. So you need to go in there and comment, and that will bring your post up on their news feed. So you want to keep cycling through the people. That's one way. The other, by, by comment on, on people's. And, and then the other thing is you want to do is you want to comment on other people in uncorked stuff. And, and I'm going to tell you there's, there's a couple of reasons to do that. One is if you comment on Danny's stuff, then your Facebook friends are going to see Danny's comment or Danny's post. So it will give credibility to what you're doing especially if you don't have a whole lot of friends. The other thing is it does, especially if you have a team, you want to comment and share your team's comments and, and stuff. And, and, and that way it, it gives credibility to them and it brings that up on your feed and their feed and, and stuff like that. So there are things that you can do to enhance the experience for the viewers that are watching your wall. If, you, if somebody's got you know 3,000 friends and you comment, on some of the chances are they're not going to see it because it's so far down in the news feed. So, so you want to comment 
and thank people for liking it and thank them for commenting and, and stuff like that. And, and so don't post on other people's walls and stuff like that. So we're going to close it out, you guys. We're running on almost two hours here. I could go on for another hour. Honestly, I could. Man, I so could just add one more thing about, about Facebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I, I want so – what I'm going to do – Danny, open it up to you for, for to add some stuff on there and then for some closing yeah. comments and then we'll, we'll, okay. we'll All right. schedule the next one. Uh, it's really quick. One thing I do every day is I go to the, see whose birthday it is. All right. And, and the reason why is is because show people that I care. And, and I just don't do it just because there's a reason behind it. I want people to know that, that I, I acknowledge it's their birthday. Because here's the thing is, is that when your birthday comes up and it's on Facebook, you're probably going to want people to acknowledge your birthday also. But like Vince said, is when you comment on their page, that, that involves them in your news feeds, and then they, they'll get to see more of your uh, feeds and what, what you do. But enough of Facebook, enough of inviting, enough of the list and everything, folks. Here's the bottom line with this opportunity we have here. It's going to take something... It's going to take you to do something different every day. It's as simple as that. Um, if, if you're going to bed tonight and you feel you didn't do enough, that's okay. Tomorrow, just do more. It's as simple as that. It's totally up to you how much effort, time and effort you want to put in this business. Vince and I, you know what? It's not a secret we, we're in this 24-7. It's not a secret why we've had success because we're in it 24-7. I've learned in this industry, if I want some, what something else, somebody else has or the success they have, I'm going to do the best that I can to mirror what they do. Simple as that. I'm going to get as close as I can to the successful people in this industry, and that's what I've done for the last seven years. What I've learned isn't, or what I teach isn't what Danny figured out on his own. It's what Danny's been taught. But I had the work ethic to go along with it. Now, I can't teach you work ethics. That's totally up to you. You decide how much time you want to put in it. But if you want success in this industry, guess what you got to do? You got to do what successful people do. It's as simple as that. If I want to become a professional athlete, professional golfer, I can't do it at golfing once a week. Guess what I got to do? I got to focus 110% on golf. I got to go every day and hit balls and play and hit balls and play and well, that sounds like fun. I'm going to go play golf tomorrow. <laughs> but the bottom line is, is that you can't expect to get somewhere where somebody already is without doing what they're doing. It's not going to happen. I don't care where you are in this business, whether you just got in or you've been in since day one and you're whatever level you're at, bronze, silver, gold, platinum, whatever else is out there. In order for you to keep going to the top, you got to continue doing what you're doing to get you there. And let me tell you this. It's easy to get to the levels that you've that you achieved, the harder thing is staying at that level. And what I mean by that, you never go back and rank. But if you want to get paid at every month at that rank, you're going to have to do more with you, more than you did last month to hit that rank to stay there this month and go on to the next one. The bottom line, if you want success, go out there and do what it's going to do to, to help you achieve that success. We're here to support you. We're here to help you in any way we can. But I can't drill it into your mind every day what you have to do. It's totally up to you. We have an opportunity here. Um, we're just getting started. If I could take from my heart and my mind what have I achieved in this, what I've experienced in this industry, that's been a, it's only been a short time. It's been since 2007. Just it's not even going on my seventh year. If I could take that and, and open it up like this and go, look, this is what it is. This is what I've experienced. You will get it, maybe. But take this business from here. And put it in here, and don't stop, and we'll see you at the top. All right, Vince, back to you. Awesome, Danny. Good stuff. You know what? I'm I'm gonna close in in this. It, it also, it, you know, we've got about right now just over 50 people still after two hours on this webinar, this, this Google Hangout, and you know, some of you are, are hungry for the information, and and you know, I'm gonna. Like Danny said, you do something every day. So do do contact somebody new every day. Add your list, but but make sure that the people don't, you know, set a goal that that nobody sits on your list for more than twenty, more than forty eight hours without being contacted by you. If you add your list daily, then you'll never run out of people to show the plan to. And and remember, probably everybody on here would show the plan fifty times a day if you have the people to show the plan to. So the problem is not showing the plan, 
The problem is finding people to show the plan to. Well, there's only one way to do that is to throw people in the funnel. Build a funnel, build a database, build a, a candidate list and keep adding to it daily. Whether it's Facebook, belly to belly, whatever it is, you know, there, there's hundreds of ways to do that and, you know, to, to add people to your list. But you're looking for people that want, you know, my mentor always told me, his name's Daryl, he always told me, Vincent, you're looking for people that are dissatisfied. They're either dissatisfied with their present financial situation, they're dissatisfied with, with their retirement plan, they're dissatisfied with their, their present network marketing company that they're in. They're dissatisfied one way, shape, or form. And, and so all you need to do is share with them what Uncorked is going to do to, 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 to fix that dissatisfaction. That's it. And so go out there and, and take your eyes off of the when you're meeting people, quit trying to get people and just go out there and create conversation with people, get in the habit of doing it on the daily basis, put yourself in a position to get names and numbers from people, call them in the next 24 to 48 hours and you'll see your business grow leaps and bounds and then you won't have to be spend so much time trying to get the people that are in your business to do stuff that they don't want to do and wasting your time trying to 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 drag people and and to doing it and trying to spend so much time trying to convince Joe and Martha and, and Mary and all these people to do something and getting all frustrated Instead, you go out there and find somebody that wants this thing just like you, and you'll be amazed at how simple this business is. The business is hard because you're busy trying to make turn apples into oranges. Go out there and find people that, that want it. Get, share the plan with everybody. Some people get in, and just because they join the business with you doesn't mean they have a fire in your belly. Like Danny says, a lot of times the, the problem is right up here. They haven't turned the business into their heart. And so go out there and find some people that want it with you. You'll be amazed at how easy this business is when you find three or four people that want to build a business and aren't afraid to go out there and stretch a little bit and learn a little bit and grow a little bit. And, and you'll be amazed at what can happen instead of you trying to turn apples into oranges. You can just go out there and find some oranges. Okay? Anything else to add, Danny, before we close it out? Yeah, just kind of give people an update of the schedule, what's going on in um – as far as the next uh, hangout we're going to do, um, and uh, as far as what we're looking at for meetings in the next month, I, 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 let me just kind of add, we're, uh, we're looking uh, to do a Super Saturday uh, in November in Reno, uh, but it's going to be a little bit more extravagant than just a Super Saturday. We'll have a Super Saturday with a dinner. It'll be kind of a pre-holiday bash. I'll uh, be looking for that. Uh, we are looking to put a, a Super Saturday here um, in Sacramento this month. Uh, but folks, you know, again, just get out and do something. Um, and uh, Vince, when's our next hangout going to be? Uh, let, let's let's make it Monday for now. Um, I would really, honestly, I would like to do one sooner than that. But I just don't know if if uh, you know what day would be good. I think we, we've got people at this point. I think the, the next important part is showing the plans. We don't want to give people the power to to invite and, and not give them the power to show the plan. So, I, I mean, I can do it any time. I've got a couple of, of meetings going on on the Wednesday night, and the, the, the Reno's groups does their meeting. I will be in Fresno this weekend, Saturday. So, you know, if we can get together Thursday or Friday, I'm I'm okay with that. Otherwise, we just do it Monday. Uh, what do you think? Or stay tuned and you know, yes, we'll stay pop tuned. On you guys. Stay tuned. Um, I think Monday, if we keep it to Monday night, it's a good night. That way, everybody can start planning their their weeks around it, and um, you know, we can uh, we can add days in here as we go. But for sure, next Monday, if we're gonna do something between now and then, we'll let you know. Absolutely, good, 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 good job. So next Monday, and if not before that, um, we'll we'll let you guys know, and and just know that that we're gonna do everything we can to prepare you to to go out there and and share this this wonderful opportunity that we have. But it's up to you to 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 force yourself to go out there and do something every day. And, and you'll be amazed what we're going to happen. So God bless you all. Have a wonderful evening. I appreciate all you guys getting on here. Say goodbye, Danny. 
Bye bye. I see everybody. Thank you for your time. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you. God bless. Thank you.